in the old oh, dropped him dropped him dropped him the second chance down off the edge of Graham Gooch's bat Sally Malik and that should have been caught yes no slip catches are really easy but uh, well that's as comfortable as you'll probably get one nice height Gooch trying to play a shot off the back foot and straight in more or less waist high even on the second attempt and the bowler's certainly not too pleased either. No, he wouldn't be at all happy with that, and uh, nor would Jarvid and Dad, because three chances went down in that England total of 72 for two. Gooch unbeaten on 39, Stewart out for 15, and Atherton without scoring, and Smith with Gooch on five. 72 for two, the bowling figures, Wazi Makram outstanding, a little bit of stray in direction, but he came in with those two vital wickets. Two for 33, Wakai Yunus 10.1 overs, two maidens none for 30 and Akib Javed to add insult to injury had eight runs taken from that over where there was the drop chance so after three days just two days play but three days in all Pakistan 505 for nine declared England 72 for two and still 234 more runs to avoid the follow-on 505 for nine declared for Pakistan England 72 for two and they require 234 more runs to avoid the follow-on. We join play now in brilliant sunshine. It really is a super day here at Old Trafford. And we're going to join Wasim Akram. It's the first ball of the second over. And he's bowling to England captain Graham Gooch. First runs in the outfield quicker than it was on Saturday, four runs. An impressive sighter from, from Wazim Akram there. A little bit of movement. Well, a bowling change already. We've got um, Akib Javid replacing Waka Yunis once he'd finished his over. Robin Smith quickly onto that. Well, this is a looser delivery, short of a length medium pace, bowler not up to his fullest pace and it's easily smacked away. You've got to get into the batsman very early on because if you allow quality players like Robin Smith and Graham Gooch to get in, get a sighter of medium pace bowling, then this is a very good pitch once you get in. Oh, saying which, went through Smith and very nearly through the stumps. Maybe he could hear what I was saying, Jack. And it made him sort of uh, zip it through a little bit. There's a bit of bounce, cuts him in half. Hostile delivery, and this really has been a super over. Easily the best of the morning. And that gets Graham Gooch to 50. on it but uh, nailed him absolutely plum it looked didn't get forward at all Aki Javid strikes and uh, England now 93 for three a lot of applause it's not for Robin Smith it's for that man David Gower the reception and uh, his first ball back for England will be bowled by his Hampshire colleague of last year, Akib Javid. Well, it's one way to get off the mark. It wasn't the way he was aiming. Footwork, timing, and sheer elegance. And that second boundary of Gars brought up the hundred for England. Ah, oh, beaten him. 
good bowling because that, that is a difficult field to bowl to the uh, with only one man in front of the wicket on the leg side and a long leg your line's got to be absolutely spot on and that was exactly what Akib is aiming for there we go we well, dropped him same old script and it always goes to four but that was a very bad miss by Pakistan Akib Javid is a real speedster and the ball went quite slowly it was in the air a long time going to slip it's probably the only thing you could say in defence really if it slips it down he had to get a, quite a long way it was above head eye it's Sally Malik at first slip, and he was the man who put down Graham Gooch. <coughs> Little nudge, he shouts catch, but uh, it's blown away off Gower's bat. He gives it a little flip on the onside, well, he always has done. It's now 30. Jeffrey Boycott's run aggregate in an England test career. Warm applause all the way around and England teammates standing. Applause from the field as well. Runs elegantly acquired this morning. Not without the traditional go risk. And they're still intent on uh, testing David Gower with faster bowling. Waka Yunis comes on from the city end. Beautifully played. Terrific clatter as the ball strikes the uh, perimeter advertising. for David Gower and a word in his ear from Graham Gooch keep his head down keep concentrating oh what a good catch well Gower is staying there Inzamam is on his way because he's damaged his hand umpire Shepard and that will be not made a move. Didn't completely look as though it uh, carried. It, that may be why he's damaged his uh, finger if his ball is uh, ground. So we can get a better view of it here. Yes, it's uh, hit the ground. It's damaged his uh, his finger. There's no doubt about that. Makayul is certainly uh, inducing that shot from David Gower with a ball that just left him and unfortunately for him and for Pakistan it didn't carry all the way and uh, I, I felt that David Gower was right waiting for the umpire's decision That's good stroke from Gooch And I think uh, Mushtaq here bowling shorter and quicker which is not what uh, really he should be doing and I am sure that Javid Miyadad is encouraging him to bowl a little bit slower take his time and uh, try and get uh, the ball to turn by giving it more air which at the moment he is not doing that's a lovely shot as good as anything he's played this morning has been given he stood there but it was a wave down the leg side it was a nothing shot in fact in the end he may well have been trying to leave it and uh, 
disappointment for Gooch, but he's gone, caught down the leg side off Wacky Yunus. He's gone for 78. And now the innings back in the balance at 186 for four. Now that's one of the areas in which Graham Hick looks vulnerable. A little nod of the head there for Waka Yunis. I think he enjoyed that, making Graham Hick dance a little bit. Wonderful session for the crowd. They've uh, seen England crashing on. Just like that. Four more. Here's Roger Macron. The third man, four runs. The 106 needed to uh, allow England to avoid the follow-on. 200 just up for England. And it's Roger Macron now. Moen Khan, and that is the fifth wicket down. That'll be disappointment for David Gower and triumph for Wazi Makram. He's broken through, and England still deep in trouble. 73 for David Gower, a splendid knock, and he will be disappointed with that dismissal. David Gower once again showing here that uh, if the ball is there, he sort of plays the shot, and he has got over 8,000 runs playing in a similar fashion. He hasn't changed at all. And it's just that uh, this time, in fact, uh, he didn't uh, middle it. New batsman is Chris Lewis. And that is quite possibly one of the shots of the ball. And the ball wins with, uh, well, I think Wacky Eunice will wish he was in a position other than mid-off where the bowler can look at him and have a word with him because that was not a great piece of fielding. Nice shot, but uh, Wacky Eunice having a bit of problem there getting down. That was short enough for Graham Hick to uh, do that too. It's one of his strengths. Now, if Hick's got the confidence to do that... I keep Javid back on. delivery may well have moved back but Graham Hick feet nowhere and uh, that's the end of that ball by Akib Javid for 22 well I think Akib Javid deserved this he's bowled very well without much luck and again that was a good delivery it set off angling in and then just held up from leg What a great sight for the bowler. The middle one completely removed. Jubilant supporters as Jack Russell comes to the wicket. It was a no ball, but uh, Russell didn't know an awful lot about it. Now that might be ours. Emmys try to avoid it. 
in the end did nothing and now England in deep trouble and what an over from Akib Javid two wickets in it and Russell goes for four well caught in no man's land once you decide to leave it you must get the hands out of the way he didn't New batsman in Salisbury. And he did a good job at Lords as night watchman. This was a Mackham coming back at the Stretford end. Oh, that must be close. My word, Jeffrey boycotts alongside me. Well, I would have been jumping up for this if I'd have been one of the Pakistan fielders. Big swing ball, padding up, no shot. My goodness me, if you're not going to give them out for not playing a shot to that. Missing off stump, Joe. Yeah, hitting middle. That's a good clip. It looks like a good save, too. Asif Mushtaba, who was a deep square leg. That's a good shot. Beautifully played. That's the first time that Chris Lewis has looked really composed about playing the shot. He splashed the bat of the ball time and again, but he waited this time. Oh, beautifully fielded, brilliant cricket. Oh, well, if ever Wasim Akram deserved a wicket, it was then. And it was all a no ball. So Lewis could have been run out. A run out off a no ball. What a death that would have been with England trying to save the follow on. And he was miles out, wasn't he? Why do batsmen do that? Often happens, doesn't it? And there's four more to follow on, and no one will ever know how it was made. It'll appear in the scorebook as the four that uh, took Chris Lewis to within two of his half century. Chris Lewis has a fine stroke for me in Salisbury. It's good cricket from this pair. The 300 is up for the loss of seven wickets. 306 the cutoff point for the follow on. There's no discernible shout there. From Lewis, but you can bet your life there is a wonderful feeling of elation because not only has he brought up his personal milestone of a half century against Pakistan, but he has taken England past the moment where they may have been asked to follow on. Now I'll just say with Kai Yunus. See, this is good cricket from Salisbury. He's a well-organised tail-ender. As Railing was said, he gets behind the quicks and therefore he's in position, if he gets a half volley, to do something with it. Out! And from round the wicket, he's done it again, straightening the ball up, tempting Lewis into the drive, and that's the end of the fine innings from Chris Lewis. Owen Khan's fourth victim was in action strikes and uh, now England 3-1-5 for eight. Oh, England's immediate future in the hands of uh, 
two tyros there, Tim Munton and Ian Salisbury. They're all reflective. What might have been if they hadn't dropped four chances. And three more there. Signal's been given, the second new ball has been taken. <clears throat> That's the 50 partnership. <coughs> the sound now, they've had a long day. It's going to be even longer unless they can get two more wickets. And a bowl is short, and it's been hot out there, and there is Ian Salisbury's 50. There is 50. There's the England players, and uh, Tim Munson giving him a handshake. He was an action, and uh, he's got so, so much ability to move the ball from any sort of length run. And that's the end of it. He's got his wicket. <laughs> A relieved upstretched arm from Wazi Maxim. And the end of Salisbury, and that's been a splendid innings. 379 for nine. The old Trafford crowd will give him a huge reception. Five wickets for Wazi Maxim. Now that is a waste. That is um, a fairly inexplicably senseless piece of bowling. <laughs> Wasn't just the shot, but the flourish at the end of it. He's got a pretty expensive pickup, but the flourish at the end of this shot. I just wonder whether the um, umpire Palmer is having a word with Akib Javid. He's indicated that there's too much short stuff in there and uh, the relative skills of the batsman have to be taken into account. And this is not a pleasant ending to the day's play. Well, certainly it's senseless at this stage of the game, but at the same time, I feel that that particular delivery wasn't short enough. No ball called, so the over is taking some while. Now, umpire Palmer and umpire Shepherd are exchanging words. I think that has been a warning given to uh, Palmer, Looks. given by Palmer to Akif Javid. And again, short of a length, but nothing exceptionable in that to umpire Palmer. At the end of the uh, well and over that was full of incident. Some of it not too pretty. necessarily mean the end of the day for these players after what we saw. And he's got a little slow ball. What could be more fitting? 
it's a triumph in the end for Akib Javed, who picked up Devon Malcolm for just four. A good effort from Tim Munton, 25 not out. And uh, an outstanding effort from England in general terms. Gooch, 78, and Gower, 73, dropped at 15. And uh, in the process, going past Geoffrey Boycott's record. Hick, 22, a valuable partnership between Hick and Lewis. And Lewis batted splendidly. It's the best innings I've seen him play in the context of a test match. The bowling figures for Pakistan, it was a frustrating day for them. They missed those four chances, and uh, with that went the possibility of making England follow on, and also went their opportunity of victory. Wasim Akram, 5 for 128 from 36 overs and four maidens. Wakai Yunus, 32 over six maidens, one for 96. Akib Javed, 21.4 overs, one maiden, four for 100, but a frustrating day for him, and Mushtaq, was ill-used today by his skipper, I thought. Ten overs, one maiden, none for 50. I thought he could have been bowled much more into the breeze from the Warwick Road end. That's the situation of the match at uh, the close of play on the fourth day. Pakistan, 505 for nine declared, with Amir Sohail is 205. That does seem a long time ago. And England, 390 all out, just after six o'clock on this fourth day. Now, in the course of uh, that innings, uh, David Gow went past Jeffrey Boycott's record. This is the way the table of test run getters looks now. David Gow on top. These are the England players. 8,154. Jeffrey Boycott, 8,114. Colin Cowdery, 7,624. And Graham Gooch playing in this match also, 7,357. 15 runs ahead.